morning. We've made a start now, finally, on the West Pennine Way. Just come up from the hill there. And left the houses of Edgerton behind. In the distance, you can see Winter Hill, which we will return to. And now we're on our way up onto Cheatham Close. Morning folks, Nigel here from Mambling Trails. So I was originally going to do some of the national walking trails, but with COVID and the travel restrictions, I decided I probably would do something that's a bit more local. The one that caught my attention was the West Pennine Moors, and that's mainly because it's um, close to where I actually live. So the idea is that over three days, I'll walk 46 miles and probably do two nights of wild camping. The way in which the walk kind of breaks up is that um, there's actually three towers. And so the first tower um, is referred to as Peel Tower, and that's over towards Bury. Then we have Darwin Tower over to the north. And then for day three, we will actually head over towards Rivington Tower. Um, so yeah, so that's the plan. Day one, Peel Tower. Day two, Darwin Tower. Day three, Rivington Tower. So, less talking, let's get walking. So the purpose of recording this was to actually show you the badge that we're going to be following. And you can actually see here, and hopefully read, the West Pennine Way. Obviously someone has also left their uh, water bottle behind. So we're now approaching Turson Tower, but before we get there, there's a very interesting bridge to see, which will become clear if we get to the end of this road. So you will see that this bridge has actually got some turrets and it's actually built in a medieval style. We've actually got a turret here so I'm gonna climb up, why not? Not the easiest thing to do whilst carrying a rucksack but hey ho, nothing ventured. How about that? And in fact, I know from being on the railway, um, so this is the railway that is bolting to Blackburn. And um, when you approach this bridge, it looks quite majestic, like you're going through a fort entrance in a train, rather bizarre, bizarrely. So again, you can see some more elements of it and I don't know if you can spot but there's even some uh, arrow slits as well like we would need to repel the uh, people arriving by train <laughs> Here we have a fine
main set of gates for the entrance to Turton Tower. And in fact, you can obviously see the Lancashire Rolls there. Then we have the tower just in the distance there as well. There you go, in case you're wondering. Open March to not October and um, Wednesday to Sunday and every bank holiday. 10 till 4 p.m. and of course Victorian kitchen tea room cake and tea what could be better so we're now getting over the style and going towards a village called Affitt's side um, ooh, we're about 900 feet up and I'm just getting over this style and um, here we can see a seat that nicely looks after we have another West Pennine Way badge so we know we're going the right direction and we're just going up there to where we can see a couple of sheep and uh, a couple of roofs so we're now in getting close to the the village Now we are at Atherset or Atherside. As you can see, they've got a lovely village green. The reason we're here is for something just over there, which I will take you to, um, which is called. Pilgrim's Cross. Good old Anvil. Looks like it's been there quite a while. So we're actually going to this marker here. There's a few theories as to why it's here. Um, one is for the pilgrims um, on the way to Worley Abbey and in fact we'll come across another uh, cross later on. Um, another theory is that uh, it's a marker post um, halfway between Edinburgh and London. And in fact, it's 200 miles, well, just over 200 miles either way. I've actually checked it on Google and it actually is. Uh, looks like it could well be um, halfway. Um, and the road that you see is a old Roman road um, referred to as Watling Street. And I've come a few, across a few Watling Streets with Roman Road, so I'm not quite sure how they all come to be called Watling Street. Um, but anyhow, that, that is the case in this instance. Um, and I'd imagine it could have been marked as halfway. So I think you can tell this is a Roman Road. Look how straight it is. And we get down this end as well. Yep, it's pretty straight. see this is a tad overgrown um, but I love actually the kind of exploring of this Ow! bit of holly there attacking me so we've come downhill a bit further and we're following this stream through the woods in fact, I just looked on the map as well. Um, it's just a small little wood. Hasn't even got a name. Doesn't register as a name. Um, but it's a, 
as you can imagine, a beautiful little quiet spot. I doubt many people come this way um, based on the um, virtual non existence of a bath. Although, obviously, it's nice to see a bit of uh, helpful woodwork there. And then, actually, we're just coming down to a road, a track, and a, and a house, and a few cars. So, we'll uh, call it quits at this point. Wonderful. Another style to clamber over. However, it's good to see that there's a sign there for Holy Mount Orchard, which is a quite a little haven that we'll uh, take good use of. So now we're in the orchard. Like I say, it's kind of hidden away, and it's behind a little area called Holly Mount, uh, right next to a village called Green Mount. Well, there's the rucksack. I suppose I best get it on, and we best get moving. Interesting place to live. Obviously, a converted church and now houses or flats. So we have a nice little challenge ahead of us, getting over the uh, over the blocks. Before now, I've managed to walk across there. Um, but now I've got to use the blocks with the books at in tow. <laughs> yes, whoosh, managed to, to make it. That's only a sign for public footpath and public bridleway, but also something that is showing us and warning us about COVID 19. Was so sad but hopefully we're on our way out of it now on the approach to Peel Town now myself and other people so Robert Peel was really remembered by the population of the north really and very in particular of course from where he came because of the fact that he was the founding father of the Metropolitan Police Force in London, which then really became the model for the rest of the UK police force. Also, he repelled something called the, port, the Corn Laws, uh, which was a tax on corn, on corn and therefore made bread very expensive um, for obviously the working classes. So, yeah, it was... Um, kind of quite famous within his time almost and obviously he has this lasting memory to him um, which is now about 170 years and standing probably see the rest of us out okay let's continue so we're now heading in a northerly direction over this way into the distance there heading towards Jubilee Tower or Darwin Tower. So now it, it's Moorland and this cross um, or station was actually uh, a point on the journey to Worley Abbey. So remember we saw one of the other crosses and um, so this would have been a landmark. You know, you imagine land here. It would have been pretty desolate to say the least. So this would be a landmark of as to where you'd be heading on your way to Worley Abbey. Um, I'd be interested to know if there's any other markers on the way to Worley Abbey. Um, I'd be very interested if you know of any more. Okay, onward we go. So we're now right in the middle of Holocombe Moor and we're on top of Bull Hill. What you can see behind me is a white flagpole. Um, this flagpole denotes um, the MOD land. Luckily there isn't a red flag flying so we're pretty safe. Um, if there's a red flag then apparently you have to be um, careful or cognizant of the live firing that may be going on. Um, but daylight today I think they've decided um, they can find 
alternative entertainment because um, it's pretty damn cold up here. It's hard to believe that we're in the middle of July, but hey ho, at least it keeps the moors clear. So this here is a corner of the wall just over Bull Hill and it's referred to as the naughty corner for the people who are in the Long Distance Walkers Association because it's one of their checkpoints on a challenge walk called the Two Crosses and if you get to this corner as one of the checkpoints you can actually have a tot of rum, whiskey and sherry I think um, and I have partaked a number of times um, it's a challenge event that, they, that takes place in March so if you have nothing better to do in March and you want to explore, explore the wilds of the West Pennines West Pennine Moors and this is the place and the opportunity to do it and take a shot of rum along the way. Behind me you'll see one of the um, signs that is by the Northern Society and they erect all these um, very sturdy signs throughout the moors and the north of England they're on the Pennines as well um, they're really solid they're like metal as well and there's a little sign underneath this one saying donated by BBC Radio Manchester, um, I, I guess quite some time ago, but thanks anyway, Radio Manchester. So you can probably hear the stream that I've um, stopped next to, just filled up with water and just look how clear that water is. So we've just come down the hill that we're looking at directly here. In front of us is Bull Hill and then we went down into the valley. Is it remote, rugged and wild? Really nice. So I've just come down that very steep part there, down the path, and then where I've arrived is a place called Haslingdon Grange. We have Ogden Reservoir just there. I'm going to go beyond the reservoir right over to the other side where the, the tree line is. So this is where I'm sleeping tonight. It's getting dark now. Um, around about 9.30 at night. I have the remains of a abandoned cottage, I think, uh, that is in obviously a very remote place. Today we achieved about 19 miles, so probably what another 27 miles to go uh, to complete the round. Tomorrow we're head heading towards Darwin Tower or Jubilee Tower as it is sometimes called. Yeah, so it's getting quite dark now. Get my PJs on and get some shut eye. Good night.